This is part two on how to travel with your gold coins if you're heading out of the United States. I'll start off by talking about what happened to me several years ago. I was leaving the Midwest out of Iowa, and after I got through getting through the TSA and get, getting my plane to the Twin Cities, I proceeded to miss my connection to Southeast Asia. And what they did was they rescheduled me to go through Europe on my way to Southeast Asia, so I ended up passing through the airport in the Netherlands. I think it was Schiphol Airport, as a matter of fact. And the reason I bring all this up to you is because to say you're traveling with your gold coins and you get redirected somewhere and you don't know what the rules and regulations of that country are and you have all your gold coins and you don't know what you're getting yourself into if you need to report anything or not to the customs when you go through customs. In this case, I did. I went through customs and and they just looked at me like I had three heads when they saw that gold, all those gold coins. And it really made them chuckle when they saw the silver. Anyhow, it all, it, it all turned out okay. I, I got through the Netherlands and they didn't seize my gold or coins or anything, but it was quite the learning experience. So I just want to start off by making a point. Make sure you're aware of all the regulations that, of the countries you're going to be visiting and make sure if your plane gets diverted, uh, make dang sure you don't come to a country where there's any possibility or chance they might seize your gold coins because you have too many of them. So with that said, what I suggest you do is have everything on your carry-on bag. And when you go through the x-ray machine and when they're checking everything out, it's very unlikely they're not going to not notice them. So usually you just have them handy so you can bring out the tubes of coins and they just look at them and usually they just wave you on through. So far I haven't had any trouble. Now recently they put in a new regulation, I don't know if it was this year or last year, I think it was in 2014, that if, if your gold coins in value exceed 2,500 US dollars, you need to get this form and hand it to them on your way out of the US. Now what's happened in some people's cases is they've, they got that form and they fill it all out and as they're leaving uh, the United States, they try to hand that form in and no one seems to want to take it. No one seems to know what the regulation is or how to apply it or what to do with it. So my suggest suggestion is, is go online, download it, fill it out, have a copy or you know print it out on your printer and have, have it with you in case they ask for it. If they don't, don't worry about it. And another point is, when you leave the U.S., you're not supposed to have anything more than 10,000 U.S. dollars. That's including your gold coins and your cash. So keep that in mind. Keep your limit under that. So like if you have $5,000 worth of gold coins and you have $7,000 worth of cash, that's going to put you over the limit if you don't fill out that that customs form declaring all your cash and cash equivalents. Now some people say, well, you, you don't go by what the value of the gold coin is. You go by what it says on the coin like in the coin right here that I'm looking at it's 50 pesos and you just that's what you count well I don't think that actually that's actually true but what is true is a lot of the people that you're going to be dealing with they don't really know what the rules and regulations are so you can kind of take advantage of that I don't recommend it unless you don't mind bearing the risk of something going wrong so what do you do if you have a lot more than ten thousand dollars worth of gold well take it out in trips or if you don't want to do that and you need to get it all out fast what I would suggest is you you walk across the border into Mexico and then uh, catch a flight out of Guatemala or Honduras used to be you could run right up to Canada and do that but now they're more and more starting to uh, limit your your gold coins and your cash to ten thousand dollars I don't remember what year it was but sometime in the distant past you could take out as much money as you wanted to out of Canada. The reason why I suggest Latin America is because you can walk across the border and as of today, November 2015, with the exception of Tijuana, you just walk right across and there's no one there to ask you how much you have or what are you doing or where are you going. The only risk you run there is getting robbed. That's again a question of can you manage the risk. If you can manage the risk, go ahead and take it. Another thing I'd point out is to ask yourself why you're doing this. If your end game is going to be to sell it to wherever you arrive and you arrive and wherever you arrive there's not really a market for your gold coins, it's not going to do you much good to take them out of the country. 
So that being said, what are the most marketable gold coins around the world? Well, typically they're American Eagles, Canadian Maple Leafs, South African Krugerrands, and there's others, of course, too, but those are the most recognizable coins. So if you're not sure where you're going to end up, I would stick with those three. Now, if you're going to be ending up in Europe, most gold coins are, you can sell fairly easy. And if you're going to, for example, go to Austria or Switzerland, it's very liquid there, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're going to, like, uh, Hong Kong or Switzerland, gold coins are fairly liquid there. In fact, most are pretty fairly liquid there. And you can sell for cash or check or whatever turns you on. So what I would suggest is if, if, you, if your end goal is just to store your gold overseas and not really sell it, then go ahead and take it with you. If you know you're going to sell it, then keep what you, you know you're going to sell right here in the U.S. And then just come back and sell it or have a friend sell it for you on your behalf. You can sign a power of attorney over to your lawyer and have you, and store it at your lawyer's office or at your family's and have your, give your lawyer a power of attorney to sell it for you and then he can just send you a check or wire you the money. If, for example, you don't want to come back, um, you don't exactly need a power attorney to have a family member sell it, but it's always a good idea to have these things in place before you need them. That would be a limited power of attorney. Um, another way you can handle this if, you're, if you can't bear the risk of, of having your gold confiscated is wherever you end up, like say for example you end up in Honduras, you're probably going to get residency there and you're probably going to do some business so you might as well get a lawyer. Once you get your lawyer, you'll just want to wire your, your money to your lawyer. Say you want to buy a piece of real estate. That's a pretty standard thing to do. There's nothing suspicious about it. So you wire your money to your lawyer. Then you have your, your lawyer buy your gold on your behalf and when they send it to your lawyer's office, you just go up there and pick it up and take it to wherever you're going to store it. And what's nice about that is it somewhat breaks the paper trail if you're looking to increase your privacy. And who will do this kind of transaction? Well, a lot of the big gold companies will send and insure it. They'll insure and send gold even to Latin America. Um, there's a company that Doug Casey's uh, associated with. That company will do it. But th they're not the only ones. And uh, that's about all I can think of offhand. That can be a private way to... to uh, have gold, you know, sent to anywhere in the world is, is, is to have the money sent to your your lawyer's custodial account and then have him purchase the gold on your behalf and then when he takes delivery of it, you can just go down to the office and pick it up. If you insist on carrying your wealth out and it's not too much and if you're only going to sell an ounce or two at a time, then most places in Latin America or Southeast Asia, you can sell it fairly easy. If you're going to sell more than a few ounces of gold, it can can become quite a hassle and there's just not a lot of liquidity if for example you want to sell 50 or 100 gold coins a few expats have found that out when they get to the destination in uh, Costa Rica and they need to sell 50 to 100 ounces of gold to maybe buy some real estate or do some business and there's just not a market for that at least not right now maybe there will be in the future so in that case uh, if you think you're going to need like $100,000 and you have 100 ounces just keep that 100 ounces up in the states or in Canada and then when you need to sell it, sell it and wire the money down to your lawyer. And that's how I would handle that. Anyways, thanks for listening to this video. I appreciate it.